My name is Chad Self. I'm the state president for the Patrol Order Police. Just wanted you to get a different perspective, so I brought um, Kathleen, a, a spouse to a police officer, and she just wants to take 30 seconds in my one minute. Okay, in 1988, my husband Chad Self graduated from the U University of Utah. I was hoping with this peace, his, I was hoping with this calm, peacemaking personality that he would go into mortuary science school, which his family's done. To my surprise, he wanted to be a policeman. Just to let you know, I was less than happy. I knew very well that we were on the road to poverty, but I had no clue what had to happen for the next 22 years and what it would consist of. Police officers have a high divorce rate for a reason. It's a hard road. I'd like to just take a moment and give you the different perspective, a perspective of a policeman's wife. We married 24 years ago. I have a rule that, that um, in our marriage that I say, check the big boot at the door so that you keep your big boot attitude out. In other words, I've been, trying to obey all the laws and rules that we need to, and I don't need to be told what to do. We've been, we have made an average of $30,000 a year. We have qualified for every government assistant program from free school lunches for our kids to WIC and back again. Every summer, I would go with my children to Parkside Elementary to enjoy a delicious free lunch that I would call our summer activity. My children would say, can we take the extra home, Mom? I'd say, no, it's against the rules. No food can be removed out of the building, so you have to eat as much as you can. The lunch lady would stand at the door and take the apples out of their pockets and throw it into the garbage can. When it was time for birthdays, the question would always be, is Dad going to be at my birthday this year? When it was time for ex extended family gatherings, the question would be, where's Chad? When your kids are opening Christmas presents, are you able to watch them? When juggling five kids at church by myself, I would just pray, please keep him safe while he's gone at work. At night when I lie alone, I pray even harder, God, please keep him safe tonight while he is out on the SWAT. Call out. My friends and neighbors ask, how do you do it? Isn't it hard for you? I said, Oh, it's okay, I don't worry about it. But, you have no idea how many times I stay awake at night, worrying about my husband's safety, wondering if he'll return home to me to raise our children. But I can't tell them that. They won't understand. I have learned in the last 24 years to, that, I have learned in the last 24 years that slow and steady is the way to survive. We take what we have earned very gratefully. We cherish the time that we spend together because he may not come home from work tonight. I have helped financially whenever I could. My, brother, my, my brothers are both police officers too. My sister-in-laws and I have, a, have had a saying that said, we'll take any extra job as long as it's not illegal and immoral. I'm not sure what I'm saying today it probably won't affect your decision anyway or what you will end up doing with this bill. But likewise, the decision you make today will not ruin my day either. I have learned to take the blows. No 1% raise this year, dear, has come often. And I am pretty much used to it. It's a good year when there is no decrease in pay. I've heard through the other officers that it's been said that the cities will make up the difference. But please, my 22 year, please forgive me for my 22 year pessimistic attitude. Just as my husband's wages have, slow, have been slow and steady increased over the last 20 years, that is what I'm recommending to this committee. Go slow, study the issues, make a sound decision before moving forward with these changes. Think about the big boot. We don't want a big boot attitude here either. Don't rush into making changes until you have thought all about the current and future families that will be affected by these changes. Thank you.